give me examples. Give me examples of how, because because to get to have a an understanding about the journey, it really adds. It, it helps create the the picture, and gives the weight to the content of the song. No, I understand. Um, I was in a home invasion. I lost my brother. <gasps> oh, you know, my I was God. sad about female. Like some backdoor type of situation. I don't like crowds. I'm an artist, and I don't like crowds. <laughs> I got anxiety. I deal with depression, all type of stuff. People would think you lit left and right, but that's not the case. You know, that's social media. That's what it's showing there. Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official .com. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Podcast. Kick it off. Yeah, let's do it, man. Dog. Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, as central as you need to be. Hold tight, all the originals. Yay. Yeah. Sharon is caring. For all of you that don't know, this is street culture. This is the sporting art. Yeah. This is the competitive side of this. You trust me. If you haven't got the television app, you're asleep. Fast asleep. Download it free. Android, iPhone for all your sports. Uh, whether it be DJ Mixes, Mini Docs, Big Docs, or the Notorious Podcast. Yeah, I love it. Love and love to hate. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Hodl Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Um, and yo, inside the house right now is a gentleman. I feel like it's like we're really breaking through new genre boundaries here. You know, the, 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 the drill import export is most definitely a fact. We're definitely taking it large. And there's a gentleman in Brooklyn that's been holding it down for the, for the drill scene. And I've got to give him praise for the new On Everything release. Hold tight. Kathy Kazo inside the place. How are you, Jen? I appreciate you, fam. I'm good. I'm yeah? happy to be here. Definitely. <laughs> when I first heard your stuff, I was like, this is this is something else. This isn't... It's a hybrid. Yo, mm -hmm. it's a hybrid. Mm, I appreciate that. I felt that. It feels like on first listen... It kind of felt like there was, it, it felt like, I guess the, the term would be nylon, New York, London. You know what I mean? Mm. Like the, yeah. voc the vocabulary was, was swinging from, yeah. from a very, a, a British, a British side of, of, uh, a vocabulary and mm -hmm. street, uh, uh, street banter to, New York, most definitely Brooklyn, and yeah. certain accentuations that I was like, "Yo, like, where does that come from? How, how did how did this all come about?" To be honest, like I have family in London, but they mainly they mainly be in New York. You know what I mean? So like, I, it's it's refreshing to me. Like I feel like I didn't want to be in the same scene or fit the same like sound as what New York is currently. So I was like, you know what? And and Top Boy is actually my favorite series. So like, I guess one day I was just watching it and I was just like, yo, like I, I, I vibe with this and I, I think I could make something happen where I could combine it in a way. It would be authentic. I got family. So I just tried something new. And like I said, it was refreshing. Like geographical pointers you give in the track, the songs, you know, what I mean, Dunno is a wicked tune as well. I you mean, see, that's it's one of those songs I'm sure as an artist where you'd be like, well, yeah, that's, that's, that's signed off. That's like top, top of top. That's up there. I felt that. I feel like you referring to these geographical positions, like talking about East London, talking about Tottenham. Did you come to them places? Is is, is this associ associated with your family? Yeah, I um I actually visited recently. I was in uh Northwest London and then I went to East London and I did some studio time with a couple artists. Um so yeah, I definitely had an experience. It's fun, it's different. Like I said, it's way different from New York. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I just wanted to combine it. So when I'm over there, I'm not just like on some culture vulture type of thing, you know what I mean? Like that's not it. Like, it's more so just learning the lingo, trying to understand things and, you know, feed off my cousins. That's about it. 
just add things, mix things together. Mm-hmm. You said something interesting just then. You said culture vulture. Uh, something yeah. something that anybody that is documenting <laughs> is, is uh, or at least subs- subscribing to a particular genre or movement, mm-hmm. creative movement get yeah. kind of pigeonholed with like is that something that you would is that something that you're conscious of not really like i'm not worried about it at all I, actually it's just i just had to mention it because i know i know there's going to be people out there that feel like that mm. when they hear it and and they understand that i'm from brooklyn new york you know dude so, i think it's the complete and i know you know this it's the complete opposite bro like <laughs> it, it, I, I, there's a level of authenticity there that yeah. perhaps I, you, you could easily overlook uh, the geographical because you did you you, you make it sound like you've been doing it for a long, long time. Yeah, I've been rapping for 15 years, but the, it just switched on the drill. The drill was like, no, no, this is I'm coming on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it. I guess I just stuck to it. I just put my mind to it like a student of the game, you know? Like, I really take my time and understand things before I just get on a record and say it. Like, I'm not doing that. Kind of reminded me of, a, you know, when ASAP Rocky first came out yeah. with Peso and all that, you know, that first, you know, with Clams Casino on the production? Mm-hmm. Like, Clams made that shit look, um, have a sound that was so different. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know I'm saying so. Like you've kind of got this, but vo- with with vocabulary and genre. That's a fact. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you said you were out for 15 years. Where did, where did it all begin? Tell me, tell me your backstory, man. How did it all start? Um. Well, I didn't always want to like be an artist. I used to draw. I used to do poems back in the day, like when I was young, 13, 14. Um, I ended up moving to Arizona at 15 and that's where it started. So I like at the age of 18, I ended up chilling with one of my guys and we would just be at his crib, just writing all day. He was more into it than me, but you know, we were right. And he took me to the studio. I sounded good and I fell in love with the playback. <laughs> that was me. I just hear my voice on a record. That was it for me. So, did it change everything? Yeah, I was. I never stopped. Never. Was, How come you moved to Arizona? To get away from New York, because it's. I'm gonna be real. Like, I wanted to be away from the hood, mm-hmm. and wanted to be with my cousin because he ended up moving there because he was on the same type of timing. So. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go take mm. my chances. Um, learn something new. It brought stuff out of me. You know, like I did a bunch of, I grew up there in Arizona, but I'm from New York. But don't get it twisted, like I grew up here as well, but becoming a man in yeah, Arizona. It's true, isn't it? You're born somewhere, but you grow up somewhere else easily. Mm hmm. Um, New York and London do share a similar landscape when it comes to hood, when it comes to um, violence, gangs, different mm-hmm. different weapons, same outcomes, yep. different different class system, but mm-hmm. same poverty line. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Give me some New York accounts. Like what the what what to what scale? is the things you rap about measure on the experiences that are encountered in New York? Like, like what goes down here? How serious they get? Yeah, like, because yeah, drill, drill by default is extremely, it's built on the true, honest accounts, right? It, yeah. It's more so, in a way, in a way, it's just a, it's far more guttural than hip hop in 2023, you know? Yeah, drill changed the sound of New York and the way of living as well. Like, gang culture out here is crazy, right? Really? It's, 
And it's mainly the youth. It's like 17 year olds, 18 year olds, you know, mm. even younger than that. And, and they're like, they promoting it. So it's getting worse. So it's like the kids is going to keep doing it. You're going to find new ones every day. Mm. Well, they're, they're prospects and the gangs just m- multiply. Of course, new there. characters. <laughs> Say again? New characters every day. You know? Have you had friends that have succumbed to, to those um, those circumstances? Of course. Man. Of course, I had a lot of homies that grew up in this. Dealing with more stuff than me. Yeah. You know? I'm, I'm more focused. I'm the one that's trying to like do something, be something for real. Not saying my, my people and I'm not trying to be something, but I'm the one that's focused. I don't want to be in trouble. I stay away from trouble. You know? yeah. Good man. But yeah, I got friends that I can go through a lot. I got people that pass every other week, you know, funerals left and right. Yeah. It's wow. trauma. Mm. Trauma. I've been through a lot too. You know. Especially like you would think me moving to Arizona, it would be like more peaceful. Now I went through some real stuff there too as well. Definitely. Give me, give me examples. Give me examples of how because cause to get to have a an understanding about the journey, it really adds. It, it helps create the the picture, and gives the weight to the content of the song. No, I understand. Um, I was in a home invasion. I lost my brother. <gasps> oh, you know, my I was God. said about female, like some backdoor type of situation. Wow. So yeah, I'm like. I don't like crowds. I'm an artist and I don't like crowds. <laughs> I got anxiety. I deal with depression, all type of stuff. People would think you lit left and right, but that's not the case. You know, that's social media. That's what it's showing there. Social media is like everything on face value, isn't it? It's just so, yeah. it's just a facade. Yo, yeah. that's exactly what it is. And it messes people head up, man, because they wake up to that shit thinking they got to be like somebody else. And all you got to do is be you. Big up that, uh, and big up you. Um, Appreciate. Yeah, man. The uh, the drill scene is big in New York. Mm-hmm. Definitely. That's really, the big... it's the biggest genre right now. Mm-hmm. It's everywhere. Out there. That's all you hear. You hear no R and B. You don't hear no nothing. No disrespect to R and B. I love R and B. I'm just saying. Man. That's all you hear. It's true. You going through it. This is going on. Yeah. Do, um, because do, you've got a real definitive style and accent, mm-hmm. something that ba- balances perfectly with UK and US. Do other drill MCs, artists, do they, do they speak with the same, um, elasticity? Again, like, like, this is me really being a student of the game. Like, if I show you my old records, you'll understand what I'm saying. Like, I used to rap completely different. You'll think I'm from Atlanta or something. But, like, this is me sitting down, understanding, like, all right, now I'm going to start over. I'm going to do something that I like. I'm going to get into something that I like. And I'm going to really be authentic. I'm going to understand it. I'm not going to play no game. And it's already in me, like I said. It's not like, like it's some fake shit. But I still have to understand shit before I execute. Yeah. Mm. Like, like a study of sorts. Do, do you think it... Because this is like identifiably you, right? Can, can, can yeah. you... Do... do New, Does New York... And I sound extremely arrogant for asking it in such a broad <laughs> sense. So forgive me, yeah? Do you, <laughs> but do you, do you think that there's a open-mindedness and a, and a greater understanding out there by individuals in the scene that understand the lineage of how far or where drill as a, as a genre has come from and it's, and the British association to it? Of course. They understand that? Of course. Don't get it twisted. Some of the lingo is there. You'll hear some of the lingo. We're tapped in, you know, but 
as heavy as I'm doing it and how I'm putting it on the records, no. I honestly don't feel like there's no one doing that over here. If mm. you, maybe you done moved here and did that, maybe that's the case or something, you know. But you know New York drill when you hear it. Like official New York drill, you know. Mm. You know it. But no one's no one's taking it to that next level like you are, which is something else. Maybe there is, but I ain't hear them. No, neither do I. <laughs> neither I do I. That's the that that's the most intriguing part of it all because you know, back in the day there was punk music that's that arguably either started from the US or the UK. Mm-hmm. But there was this one you know, unified uh aspect which was where the fuck shit up. And yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like and that the the slang and everything of its time just morphed. You could never really tell. Of course, you could tell the American versus the UK, but you know, in terms of the way they were attacking it, it didn't accent didn't even come into it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, but like with this, it's like it's so different that you're you're all, you've stamped a, 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 a style of your own. It's just sick. Yeah, no way. I'm trying to carry it like that. I'm not even big headed. I don't brag. I don't. I don't be out here like oh, I'm the person trying to combine UK and Brooklyn. Like I'm just doing it. And if that's how you feel, that's how you feel. Yeah. You know? How you take it in? Thank you. That's so sick. So, what kind of what stuff were you into growing up? Were you into like hip hop, rap, grime? Like what 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 kind of genres were you into on the come up? Um, Tupac, Biggie, Nas. Dr. Dre, Corrupt. Um, to be honest, I didn't listen to a lot of UK rap. But mm-hmm. after a while, we started tapping into it. I liked it. But, you know, I was more so on the Biggie and Tupac and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That's, my, that's my people over here. Yeah. I hear, I hear like Dizzy Rascal mm-hmm. made, some, it made some waves back in the... In the day, I remember that being quite a, 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 a shift in, a t- in in attention, and then gigs, yeah. gigs has kind of made some heavy impact as well, right? Yeah, I like gigs. I like gigs. Yeah, but like Heady like One, gigs. I mean, there's a bunch now, isn't there? Like, do, do, do they do they tr- transfer across the US in the same way? Oh, of, uh, course, of course, yeah, of course. Like you're you're driving your car, you'll hear it. People play it. People are definitely tapped in. I feel like it started with the producers, like drill music. Yeah, we're doing drill over here, but we have to tap in with UK producers. And then from there, it's like you just branch out. Like I, I work with a UK artist, you know? Mm-hmm. Who, who have you worked with them elsewhere in the UK? Um, Jetman, Polka. Um, have you ever seen, uh, I think it's called like Rap Game, UK Rap Game or something? Yeah, of like course, yeah. You know poker? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got a couple of records. With nice. Her. You know? So, yeah. I'm just waiting on her. She worked different. Yeah, 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 she's yeah. Tough. She's tough. Man, it's so curious. It's so curious. And I also worked with a um a female R&B artist in London as well. Her name's Chanel. Chanel. Okay, okay, yeah. dope. So, it, so, in doing so, you, I mean, if there was if if the opportunities widened, would you would you would you live in the UK? Is that something that is a is 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 kind of on the mission brief? Like, would you extend that lifestyle to to be moving over here? You know, it's crazy. I think about that all the time. Like, and that's that's really the mission. I would love to definitely. I would. I tell my people that all the time. Like, if I had the chance, I'll go. It's refreshing. And it reminds me of home. It still reminds me of home. Mm-hmm. You know? That's fucking crazy, bro. Like, you had any gigs here yet? Hmm? You had any gigs here yet? Um, no. Nah. Nah, any I shows? I, no, nah, I haven't done a show yet. But I'm looking forward to it. I got some things planned, man. Yo! Next year, I've got to get you over, bro. <laughs> Please do. I appreciate it. I'm with it. 
Well, this. That's what we're kind of here for, man. It's like putting a finer spotlight on because you know this show is is all about the new things coming through as well as the his, the the historically correct documentation. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's fucking great to get an insight from somebody that not only is on the ground over there getting, you know, tr- transferring information to us, but also has such a passion for the culture over here. And you've never done a gig here, which is something yeah. else. I haven't done one yet. Mm-hmm. That's on a checklist. Trust me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your what's your um recording process? Tell me, tell me about your studio processes. Um, I got I got um producers that I, I work with. Um, if I don't take a beat from them, I probably go on YouTube, run through a few beats. It takes a minute because I'm very 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 picky. Um, I sit down, mumble to it, catch a little vibe, a rhythm, you know, mm. and then I in their words and then I'll probably play with that for like maybe like a week to get a solid understanding of it you know and then I'll go to the studio I'll sit down with my guy Spud and uh yeah it's, it's go time once that mic turn on and record it's go time <laughs> I usually do one takes so I don't really do much you know messing up stuff like that you don't fuck about how many um how many hitters do you think? What's your batting average? Like if you go in a studio, what's your batting average? Like three and ten are bangers, ten out of ten are bangers. What's your batting average? Spud, I'm telling you, he would tell you, man, like twenty, twenty and old, twenty and twenty and old. But sometimes I'm not gonna lie. Like if I want to be super experimental. Like if I get a beat and I want to really do something different, those be the times where I go to the studio and it may feel like you just wasted your time. You didn't really do what you wanted to do. Mm. But if I if I'm prepared, like I said, sit down with the beat, mumble, fill in the words, and I go into that studio, it's go time. Mm-hmm. I'm ready. He knows that. What's he what's um what's what's something you know. different? What's something like different? You said you said. Sometimes I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I want to do something different. So what's oh, what's right. di- what's different? Like Afro. Yeah. Oh, okay. I want to try something different, you know? Because you gotta you gotta you gotta play around with stuff and just find different lanes. Cause shit get old. I'm not saying mm-hmm. drill gonna get old. You you could keep drill alive as long as you want. You don't get old at all unless it's old to you. But you know, after a while, when stuff started getting like, all right, I didn't put out enough for records. Let me show the people I could do something different. I'm tapping with something else. It may not even be Afro, but that's just something that I picked at. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's funny because when you have like the hardcore elite, like Grime, Grime has a real hardcore audience over mm-hmm. here, as does drum and bass, jungle music. It's like, their their hardcore fan base are like so on it, and that the artists themselves, I, I guess the term is being faithful to the few, yeah. which I think goes a long long way. I'm trying to think of some hip hop equivalent equivalents of people that have just stood the test, so they've come full generation. Yeah, um, but but that's I think that's important to the integrity of an artist, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You gotta you gotta stay alive, man. People come in this game every day, every second. You gotta be like a Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Snoop just stays relevant somehow. Somehow yeah. without reaching, he doesn't sound like he's forcing it. He just blends in. It's true, isn't it? Yeah. Noriega. He's a great, another great example where he's able to move differently second time mm-hmm, around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Do you think like Noriega and those cat, the hip hop guys, do, they, do you think they fuck with drill to the to the level they should be? I think they fuck with it because the youth fuck with it. Right. I don't think really respect the message, but they have to. 
because that's what's bringing the money in. And they're not going to refuse, say one of these kids come up to them like, yo, I want to put you on a record. Old heads is taking that. They're not going to be like, oh, no, I don't, I don't like the message. It's just saying the third. No, they happen. You don't get this money. So I don't really think they respect the message, but hey, man, got to live with it. What are you going to mm. do? Mm. Um, who, who's, who are the pioneers in the dual scene in the US? Like, are there any names from your sides, the I mean, people that, you know? I mean, obviously, Pop, where he's gone, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, Fabio, they, they put enough work in mm. the way they're like the top ones of this shit. 2 2 Gs, mm-hmm. you know? Pop Smoke, man, that was such a fucking crying shame. Yeah. It damn dirty. Really, really had a handle on what was on the ground over here. I think I think it's something fishy about that, but I don't know. Of course. Of course. But that's the conspiracies and it was tr- but I feel that. Yeah. You just gotta be careful on that type of level. Is there a level on it where the street you get owned by the street if you talk too much on the street in subject matter. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Levels of all that. Levels mm. of all that. Just got more smart. It's so fucking close, isn't it, bro? It's still a street nigga, but you just got money. Yeah. You just got money. So it's like you you have to know when it's time to change. And I feel like that's people's problem. They don't want to change. It's okay to change. You know, I'm not saying completely change, but move right. Look what when you when it's time to elevate, elevate yeah. and get out. Of course. Like this whole issue with like security. What what's what's that? You can't have security. When you make it, you look like a clown, you look like a, a punk. Or whatever the case is. Hmm. Why well, I can't protect myself. I don't understand. Yeah. So there's a stigma for that. Uh, you'd mm-hmm. say, that, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's funny, man. It's funny how people... Like, you seen PNB? Yeah, huh? Like, what he got to prove, you over here proving to your girl that like, you could take her to a restaurant and y'all could just be outside. Come on now. Yeah. When you yeah. easily probably could have just been like, listen, I'm going to buy out the spot, have security in it, and we chilling. Yeah. But no, we're going to do this like this just so I can show you. Come on. And just like that, it's gone. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. But you know what's even more like, how, how, how that how that incident how that happens and people there's people there doing that mm-hmm. taking people out like that of course they wake up for that shit I, can't, I just can't get my head around it and I think mm-hmm. that's I think that's what a lot of this is about is that people are so sanitized with whether it was NWA in the 90s mm-hmm. you know that makes that trivializes all the serious stuff. It's almost like it gets normalized. And when you yep. listen to lyrics, you you can't relate it with an actual crime scene or a an event that happened because it's so cowboys and Indians in people's minds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is the next step an album? I mean, really trying to build a bigger buzz, especially like online stuff like that so I fell in love with the whole because it made more sense just putting out singles you know because mm. I feel like the attention span it's not it's not there like people just don't want to finish a whole album nowadays I feel that <laughs> I do feel that <laughs> they don't like people is just we too lit now man like it's too much drugs in the air it's, it's Give me three songs and on to the next. Mm-hmm. I feel like dropping singles is my thing, but I am going to put out a, 
like album. Is mixtapes a thing? Like, what's up? Yeah, mixtapes are the things. Yeah, mixtapes are the things. Like, Potter Paper, you know, K Coke. These guys in the UK here, they put out right. they put out mixtapes like that. Yeah, you know, you know, it's crazy out here. That, that's that's not a thing like that no more. Not really, really? I don't know. I don't know. I don't hear mixtape shoutouts like that no more. But. I'll put out a project though. Might be small though, five songs. Mm. EP or something. Maybe. Dude, you're you're so on the ground. It's actually mind boggling me. Like for you to say that there's no mixtapes coming out anymore, or you know, it's too lit for you know anything longer than, than probably a you know a two minute track. Like yeah. people's attention spans and what's really going on out on the street like Can I say something not to cut you off no no do it oh no you 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 heard the on everything record right uh-huh all right so some some blogs are saying the beginning is too long of a build-up <laughs> so that right there tells you you Yo. know some don't want to wait like come on you know speed it up jump in you know what? I, I I thought the intro created every as element of the suspense of your entry, bro. Like, and the video it just makes it even better. But people are gonna talk, man. Can't please everyone. No, you can't. You can't. What's the future hold, my brother? What is the future? This is such an incredible conversation. <laughs> it's so good. It's, it's deep. Amazing amazing um i just want to be in a position where i could take care of my family and myself for once like i, I sacrificed so much for this i'm broke i go broke for this music you know and i take a beating but my people know i love it i never stop i've even had like family members like yo you know you not saying that they did they hating on me or nothing like that, but it's just more like, yo, you you still doing it or what? Yeah, I'm still doing it. I'm elevating. I'm getting better every year. Every year. And that's the mission. Like every record, I have to get better. Me. Mm, so I still have fun with this. That's it. There's this there's the theory of the you know the ten thousand hour theory. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that equates to seven years yeah i did 15 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in one year i had dropped 100 songs this was when i had the mic in my room the only reason i'm not going crazy now is because i have to invest in myself it takes money to do this if i could sleep in the studio it'd be crazy mm. you're retarded you know but also, um, just to add value to what you're saying there, there's mm -hmm. also, there comes a point where, you know, you've got to look after, A, you've got to look after your own sanity in doing yeah. the same thing over and over again. But through doing that trial and error, you then can look at your analytics, look at your, you know, your batting average and your hit rate. Mm -hmm. And say to yourself, right, okay, this time I'm going to take stock. I'm going to work yeah. this thing in a different way, right? Yep. And that's what we're doing now. Like, if 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 I'm if I understand what you're saying, like, you know, I've been recording forever. I've been putting out music forever, but now it's a business. Mm -hmm. Now we're we're focused on marketing. You know, mm -hmm. so it's it's different now. I'm experiencing new stuff. Like, I'm on this whole podcast now. You know, <laughs> you are my G, <laughs> yeah, my boy. You know, yeah, you so it's it's elevating, man. It's gonna keep going up. It's gonna keep going up. I know it. Yeah, it really, really will. And I love that you're moving that focus in all the right ways, man. Appreciate you, my brother. It's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. Thank you. It's been a pleasure being here. Yeah, my guy. Do this again, you know? 
Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Stay on the line. Um, I'll run some shit by you before before we duck up. But yo, we are in with our fashion killer killer podcast. Kathy Kazo inside the place. Come on, son. Yo, mm. big shout out to you, my brother. Thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate your family. Killer Killer Podcast, I like in was out of fashion. You stay lucky. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. Don't talk to an I wouldn't. Be lucky. Peace.